This video is about making and flying spinny big mouth tumble wings, which can be made out of ordinary phone book paper or even newspaper. Mysteriously flying or surfing them on invisible waves of air is sometimes called walk along gliding. Tumble wings are the best way to start air surfing. It's how I started. Mind you, that doesn't mean it's easy. You have to follow instructions, then you have to experiment. Learning how to adjust and fly will be frustrating. You won't get skilled at this in just one day, but when you get it, it'll be worth your time and trouble. We live at the bottom of an ocean of air. Normally we can't see air, but when an object moves through, the air goes up and over. By deflecting with something flat, you create a wave of relative wind that goes up and over. Just as you can surf on the leading edge of a wave of water, so too can you surf lightweight gliders on the air wave. There are other forms of air surfing, and you can use other materials like foam. Some are so efficient that you can keep them up with only your hands and lots of practice. But start with a tumble wing. It flies very slowly, so you have more time to react. You can fly in a living room, and all the practice you invest in learning to fly will directly help you fly other gliders. And if you wreck one, it's just paper and a minute of your time. I developed the Big Mouth inspired by the experiments of a German technique teacher, my friend Thomas Buckwald. I think this Big Mouth is the easiest to make, but I might be biased. You can investigate links to making the classic original T-Wing invented by another friend, the paper airplane guy, John Collins. Look in the text description area or at Science Toy Maker. Recycled phone book paper is best, and how many pages of attorney's ads do you need? All paper weighs about the same, or does it? Two pages of phone book paper weighs three and a half grams. An equal surface area of newspaper weighs over 25% more. You can use newsprint in a pinch, but the extra weight might make it a little heavier to fly. Printer paper weighs a whopping seven and a half grams, more than double the phone book weight. It's difficult to fly, you almost have to run to deflect enough air, and it tends to hit the board. And glossy magazine or catalog paper weighs almost as much. Tissue paper is lighter than any other, but it's so flimsy it doesn't seem to work well for me. Stick with phone book paper if you can, or newspaper. If you live in a very hot, humid place, moisture in the air might make the paper so limp as to doom glider flight. Very thin sliced white foam of a millimeter or less is unaffected by moisture and flies very well. There are links about this and other gliders made of foam. You can either print out a page of patterns from the link, no scaling, or measure out rectangles. They're about 230 millimeters by 45 millimeters, which is about nine inches by one and three quarters inches. Note that it matters which way you lay out the rectangles on the page. I was frustrated by uneven results until I realized that the paper has a grain direction, just like wood. Here are two identical rectangles cut from the same piece of paper, except one was cut up and down the page, while the other was lined up back and forth. The back and forth rectangle is too weak to span these two books, but the up and down paper is rigid enough to span the same distance. So orient your rectangle up and down the page, or your glider might be too flimsy to fly, especially in humid weather. If using a pattern, rough cut out two strips, tape down the ends, cut the sides on the solid lines, cut the strips apart down the middle. Only then should you cut the solid end lines which will also separate off the pattern. Whether you use glue or tape to hold the ends together, be very sparing to keep it light. For most efficient flight, offset the strips by about 30 millimeters or one and a quarter inch. Use a little tape. Then flip it over to tape the other end. If gluing, put a little on one end, then the other, 
that's it, but it won't glide well until you can launch and adjust. Some people will get frustrated and quit here because we can't separate launching and adjusting. You have to learn them at the same time. You'll need to be in a room with very calm air. When the big mouth spins, the pieces should curve out a little, as much as the paper is wide, or a little more, in the middle. If it doesn't curve out enough, it's uncontrollable. The glider quickly slips to the side. This lateral instability makes it impossible to fly. At the other extreme, if it curves out too much, the glider is not efficient. It drops too quickly. It flies too close to the board and hits it, ending the flight. So if it's not spinning wide enough for stable flight, you'll have to pull it out symmetrically. You might know about curling paper or ribbon around scissors. That's too much curve. But if you can use the same idea, curving around a finger or a pen to make a gentler bend, that works for me. Unfortunately, you can't know if your spinner is going to be too skinny until you can launch it. To launch, you have to know that the glider spins opposite the way a wheel spins. The top of a wheel spins in the direction of travel. But tumble wings are contrary. The top goes opposite the direction of travel because the front is constantly flipping up and over. To fly, the T-wing has to be gliding away from you. Pinch one piece between thumb and finger like this or like this. Either jerk it a tiny bit forward and or swing the bottom forward a little. Most people start out dramatically throwing it, but it's really just a slight flick. If the glider always turns one way, you're probably unconsciously tilting it. Launch it level. Once you've experimented and figured out how wide it should be, and most of your launches work, you can learn how to surf them. Surfing involves balancing the glider on a wave that you can't see while simultaneously adjusting half a dozen other things. I'll explain the common pitfalls, but you won't learn this in a day. The bigger the thing you have to deflect the air, the more air is lifting. The plastic kind of campaign sign is perfect, or cardboard. You might be able to use something as small as a breakfast cereal box or a big book. With such a small deflector, it'll be more difficult and the glider is more likely to hit the board. On the other hand, it might force you to learn more quickly because there's no margin of error. I can fly other gliders with just my hands, but not tumble wings. Here are the six things everyone has trouble with when they start. Keep the board straight up and down. Now look at your angle. Beginners tilt back, and they don't even know that they're doing it. Tilting it back deflects less air. Launch high and close to the board. You might want to walk into the launch. Push close with the board. Most beginners let the glider get too far ahead of them. If you shake the board with little pulses, you can get instant feedback about that. If you're close enough, the glider bounces up and down a little. Keep the glider high on the board. Once it starts to drop, you're fighting a losing battle. Gain altitude by walking faster and raising the board. You should practice going so fast it blows right over the top a few times. Then just slow down a tiny bit. You tell the tumblewing which direction to go, not the other way around. Beginners follow it when it starts to turn, which just makes it turn more. Instead, push in the direction you want to go. Tumble wings don't make tight turns, only very gradual turns. Make new gliders as yours get bashed up. Keep practicing and you'll get it. When you do, you can go lots of different directions with walk-along flight, but start by investing your time and energy in learning to fly tumble wings.